This is Buying Miami, life, love, and real estate. And I am your host, Joanne Jones. I'm a second generation Miamian and I am obsessed with real estate and also living your best life here in the best city, Miami. Okay, so we're here back for another episode of Buying Miami. This is season two, episode two. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm so excited that I'm actually in a second season. Like this is real, you know, this is happening. And um, today I have an uh, interesting guest with me. His name is Christopher Tapia. And I met Christopher uh, like maybe a few weeks ago, not more than a month ago. We had this big event at the headquarters of Compass, which is where my office is on South Beach. And um, I walked into my office. There was a bunch of people there. I did not like it at all because I don't like to be around a lot of people. I'm an in, I'm an an extroverted introvert, which means that like I like to create and like to do things, but then I don't like to be around a lot of people. So um, I was freaking out. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So um, I was freaking out and I was at the front desk uh, complaining because there was no internet, internet because there's so many fucking people in my office that they were all using the internet and I couldn't work. So I was going to the office manager, but she was going crazy because all these people were coming in. And then here comes Slick Rick. Chris. Okay. He comes in with like these sunglasses. He looks like, like, you know, very well dressed. Like he sells like $20 million houses. And I'm like, which I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you, do. you look, you look the part, you look exactly like a Palm beach realtor. So he Thank walks you. in and I'm like, who's this guy, you know? And so I'm like, Hey buddy, you got to fill out this form. You got to sign in. Da, da, da. And then we started talking of like instantly we became friends and I pulled him into my office. I think I hijacked him for like a good 30 minutes. And we were like, what about this? And I had this. And what about this deal? No, what about the hotel? And blah, 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 blah. So we became quick friends. Um, and finally I, I released him from my office and I let him go to the rest of the festivities. Um, but then I went around all day looking for him to tell him more stuff. And um, <laughs> since then we've been talking on the phone and we've been exchanging projects and we've had a couple conference calls and we put some people together and in passing, he has told me and for you listeners out there, you know, the real estate industry, it's a little fucked right now. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, interest rates are high and inventory is low and prices are high. And, you know, like we're like just riding this wave. So I personally have been looking for other, you know, I've been looking outside. Alternatives. The box. Yeah, alternatives to for for my buyers, for my sellers, for my sphere of influence, you know, things like outside of the box that we could do to make transactions happen, yeah. right? So Chris has told me, he's like, hey, do you know about assum assumable loans? And I'm like, huh, what? He goes, do you know about assumable loans? And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I understand kind of like when you buy a property and then you take over the mortgage that the property already has in place when they got the mortgage at a lower interest rate. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, but like, how does that work? He goes, I have a whole list of, of properties that come with assumable loans. And I'm like, oh, what? What mm -hmm. should I <laughs> I'm like, do tell. And so since I don't understand how any of this works, and um, I figured, well, let's make it into a podcast because if I don't understand it with 20 years experience, I know for sure my listeners don't understand it. And this is like good shit. Like we need to be talking about this. We need Absolutely. to bring this. We need to explain what it means and how do you how do you navigate these deals? How do you talk to your real estate agent? If their real estate agent isn't Joanne Jones or Christopher Tapia, how do you talk to your real estate agent about these things? How do you get in on this? So I figured since I wanted to have a conversation with Christopher about this anyways, we should make it into a podcast and we should discuss it, you and I, um, and and get right into it. So Chris, okay, first of all, in my 20 years, I have never done an assumable loan mortgage. But you didn't have to at that time. Yeah, yeah I, didn't, I didn't have to. to. I didn't have to. And it just, and then, so, um, I mean, educate me. Where do we begin? Like how to, so sure. you find a property so, and the, well, let, and the let, me, let me give you, let me just give you a story. Number one. So that way, okay. the, okay, like you stories. know, the, the listeners can, can listen and understand how, how this could work uh, by discussing it as a third party story. Okay. So. 
first and foremost, you know, um, four years ago, three and a half years ago, you know, rates were one and a half percent, two percent, three percent, four percent, even five percent, and people were still buying properties left and right. Um, at that time, no one really cared about uh, assuming someone's loan at two, three, or four percent because we didn't expect that rates today are going to be eight to ten percent. Um, so I was thinking to myself, okay, what would be an alternative? What can we do to help the middle class, low, med low to medium middle class that can still be able to afford a property at a certain number and be able to afford the payments? Uh, because today, you know, think about it. You, you buy a home for 500 grand, which you can't even find today. But if you did at an eight or 9% interest rate, it's like you purchasing a house that's $1.2 million today. Uh, not to mention everything else that's on top of that. Not to mention insurance companies increasing premiums like crazy by 30 or 40 percent and then so forth. So so it just makes it very, very difficult for any consumer to purchase any properties from now on till whenever. Not to mention that today went up another eighth of a point um, on interest rates. So imagine trying to buy a purchase, uh, purchase a, a property today on a conventional loan. You're looking at minimum eight and a half percent. So it's, who in the world, it's just insane. So the idea was, okay, how can I be able to attract more buyers to me or Joanne, attract more buyers to Joanne? Um, so I was able to, you know, identify, um, you know, software engineers, identify people that have data and be able to, uh, uh, you know, find uh, listings on the market today that have assumable loans on these listings. Now, the, the crazy part is 90% of the time, not even the seller or the agent even know that the seller has an assumable loan. So let me explain to you what an assumable loan is. So let's just say that you find a home today for 800,000, a single beautiful single family home, uh, because you know today anything that is nice and pretty uh, in Palm Beach, Broward or Dade County, uh, you're gonna look. You're gonna. It's gonna be between seven to eight hundred, six to eight hundred. Entry, yeah. So, entry level is entry is, level, is, decent yeah. home, exactly. So what I notice is that when these sellers that are selling these properties today uh, purchased these loans three, four, five years ago, most of these FHA or VA buyers only. Uh, most of them are going to be blending at hundred percent financing, or they're putting very, very, very small minimum amount of payments. So for, for, for their down payment. So what I've noticed and what I've seen is when somebody's asking, uh, let's say 800,000 for a property, I noticed that most of the assumable loans are about half of what they're asking. Obviously, because everything went up to the roof more than 50% in the last three to four years, as far as values are concerned. So, so you're, saying, why, you're saying it's $800,000 house and they probably have at this point, let's say a $400,000 mortgage. Well, left. They, owe 400, they owe $400 on it. Well, to keep in mind, it's because everything doubled in price in the last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So they, let's so say that's why you see numbers to be to be in a roughly around half, 50, 60 percent, maybe up to 70 percent of what they're asking right now. So imagine if we can find you as uh, you as the consumer, find you guys at a, let's say, $600,000 single family home. Um, um, you know, and, and, I, and I can identify a property for you. Uh, that has a loan at three hundred thousand, or let's say four hundred thousand, and the rate is two or three percent. Okay, and I can tell you that I can basically have you take over that buyer's payments, that buyer's terms. Not to mention the amount of savings that you can get from it. So, the example is: let's say to make an example. Eight hundred thousand is the property we uh, that they're asking for. The sale price is eight hundred. Sale price is eight hundred thousand. Okay. Uh, most uh, most that I've noticed is that the data shows me that most times half to maybe sixty percent of what they're asking for is assumable. So I can go ahead and have this buyer get qualified as an FHA Federal Housing Association approval requirement, and be able to then instead of purchasing a new loan you can take over somebody's loan. And that loan, let's say, for example, that seller that's asking 800,000 um, might have already paid three or four years of interest. So that means that the new buyer taking over this loan, 
not just to mention they're going to take over the interest rate, which is 2 3 or 4% or whatever it may be, or even lower, but also take over all those interest payments that the seller already pay. Not take over, meaning that you don't have to pay, which hence meaning that you're saving um, could be averaging between fifty to 150000 in interest uh, for the life of the loan. So if the person purchased this property, you know, in a 30-year mortgage and they paid it for four years of it, that means that the person that's going to be assuming it is going to is going to only assume 26 years of it. And that means that those four years that they paid, those most of the payments on those four years was interest. Because when you're looking at a 30-year loan, most of the first 10 years is interest. That's how the lenders make their money. Right. So imagine if you can assume a loan that the person already paid four years of interest, saving you a hundred thousand, not to mention that I can get you that low interest rate for the life of that assumable loan, not to mention or origination fees that the lender charges to purchase a new loan is also saving you on those origination fees. Um, and, and not to mention as well that, you know, being able to purchase this property you have the uh, I have the ability of also identifying a lender that will piggyback the government federal loan, a sumo loan. So now I can find you buyer a property for eight hundred thousand. Uh, let's hope that I can find you something that you can assume that's about fifty or sixty percent of the loan. Then I can have a second mortgage bor uh, borrower, I mean second lender, lend up to eighty percent of that value. So that means that uh, I can use, uh, I can uh, get a second mortgage for, you know, let's say 30%. And then you as the buyer would only have to put down 20%. So imagine being able to, you putting down 20%, having the assumable loan at two or 3%, get a second mortgage for the difference. Now the second mortgage might be a little bit high on the rate, but it's okay because the, the, long, the, the, the goal here is for you to save an average of fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars on a more a monthly payment uh, for the mortgage every single month, and that's what's happening right now. That if you buy a house today for eight hundred thousand at a regular conventional loan, um, at an eight percent interest rate today, your payments would absolutely be over fifty six hundred dollars a month or more. When you're assuming that somebody's loan, getting a second mortgage, and be able to put down twenty percent then that payment will go from $5,600 to around $4,000 a month. So now you're able to afford the payment. Now you got a low interest rate for the, for the, for the first you know, 50% of the, of, the, of the actual purchase price of the property. And then I can get you a, a lender that will back up the second mortgage for the difference. The, the key is for you to put down 20%. The second mortgage is going to be at today's rates, right? But the second yeah. mortgage will be in today's rates could average between, you know, when you're dealing with second mortgages, any second mortgage, they're going to, you know, the rate between, you know, eight to 12%. Average, what I notice is around nine to 10%. So the yeah. key would be for the buyer to try to pay off that second mortgage as quickly as possible to mm -hmm. eliminate that second mortgage and then just continue to make those small payments on the first mortgage because, hey, you got a 3% interest rate. Hey, you just saved four years of interest payments. So that means you're only paying the lender back only six years left on interest payments. So the amount of savings you're making, so the amount of savings you're getting is absolutely uh, astronomical. So, uh, so that's how we're going to be able to help the middle class be able to purchase single family homes, townhouses, villas, or even condos that are FHA approved. Uh, and be able to, you know, be able to help uh, those consumers that need it, especially in the Miami area, because Miami yeah. is just so expensive. And All rate right. insurance, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of questions. I have a couple sure. of questions. I love this. This is like music to my ears because it's a solution. I mean, um, so the some solution. People, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the key points is is that they are going to have to come up with about twenty percent. So if on an eight hundred thousand dollar home, they're going to have to, you know, have like one hundred and sixty in the bank ready to put down, right? They're going to have to, so we're not, able, and, are you uh, seeing people able to do like, and let's just talk about the category of a single family home. Are you able to see people take advantage of getting an assumable loan and then also getting, uh, oh, like an F, like, can they get away with putting less down or do they have to put 20% down? 
Uh, most thing, most second mortgages today will bar will lend up to eighty percent loan to value. So that means that for every hundred thousand dollars, they can they can lend you like they can lend you up to eighty percent of that. So that's eighty thousand. So for example, if we just make it simple, easy to find a home for a million bucks, I'm able to find an assumable loan that's five or six hundred thousand at you know, two or three percent, which is astronomical, and then have the second mortgage lender lend uh, be able to lend you the difference up to eighty percent. So yes, you will have to put down twenty percent uh, in order to be to take advantage of the savings, not just on the interest, not just on the payment, but also the amount of interest that you're saving for the lack of the loan, since the seller already paid many years of interest. Not to mention the qualifications. You're going to get qualified as an FHA, uh, uh, FHA uh, um, borrower. That means that DTIs are going to be, you, you, your DTIs could be higher. What's DPI? Uh, your, People don't know what DPI is. Uh, so DTI means debt to income ratios. So that's the difference between how much you make compared to how much you owe or you spend. So being able, the, the benefits is that you're going to, going to have to qualify based on that assumable loan at 3%. Instead of you getting a new conventional loan and try to get approved on an 8% interest rate. So imagine the benefit as well that now you don't have to be a very strong borrower to be a, or, or a buyer, borrower, buyer, uh, in order to qualify for the FHA. Uh, so that's another benefit to it. So when the, when the lender is going to look at the, uh, the, the, the servicer, the FHA servicer that I also have that's going to be servicing all our loans for us, will qualify him as if they were purchasing that home for that price that's being assumed for, for that interest rate of 2 or 3% or, or whatever it may be. So that's a big benefit because if that borrower is not making 112000 or 150000 or whatever it may be, because that's what's happening today, that if you don't making, if you're not making at least 100000 or more, you can't even qualify for a mortgage at all. So, but you do have to have 20%. What I'm hearing is, you know, you get all these savings and it, it checks a lot of boxes, but the borrower, you know, they have to be prepared. Unfortunately, but think about it. 20%. I mean, it's yeah. okay. Why not put the 20% because you're saving 50 to 100,000 just on interest payments? No, no, it's, it's you're saving it's interest rate. You're saving the monthly payment. So yes, borrow the money, get whatever you can, get the money. And then, mm -hmm. and then we'll be, and then that's how you're going to be able to afford a home at a lower rate and a lower payment, especially the lower payment. Payments you're going to save astronomically. I believe mean, between yeah. between a thousand thousand dollars a month, depending on the property that we're purchasing, depending on the assumability, depending and how much also, you're assuming. Mm -hmm. And also, if if that seller has already paid let's say four months of interest heavy payments, then when you start making your payments on the, let's say the fifth year or the sixth year of that mortgage, you're going to be able to pay it off quicker, right? Because I right. Pay. So that's what I'm saying. So that's not to mention that you're saving. Your you're ratio of payment. So, yeah, that's, that's absolutely. Crazy. So think okay, about so, it. If they pay for three, four years. And again, I'm going to say it one more time. They pay for three, four years. That means that the person that's assuming the loan, okay, is assuming only 26 years left out of the 30 years. So those, so and again, the first 10 years of a 30 year mortgage, the lender gets their money. So imagine, so the, those four years is, is ready that 20% they're putting down. You understand? I, I do. It. I do. I'm very excited. So how yeah. do we get our hot little hands on this? Like, how do we, how, how, how do the, our listeners, my listeners, how do we get in? How do well, we find out? The benefit is property? to call us, to call us directly. <laughs> call and us we can, me and you. <laughs> correct. Yeah. So you, you're in the Miami market. So, you know, the good news, you know, Miami very well. And I yeah. think that, you know, adding you to, uh, to this amazing program that we're doing and being able to identify the data that we need to help those buyers in Miami. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, calling us, calling you, calling myself uh, is going to be the biggest benefit because we have, the information that we need in order to identify the right home for them. So the good news so, is that we can be the number one agent for them to represent them for their best interest, not to mention that we're also going to represent them for their best interest on the financial side, 
by us helping them find an assumable loan and helping them holding their hands and 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 and, and um, finding this the FHA servicer, which I already have in place to give to the client, and getting the second mortgage in place, and just educate them all the way to the finish line. To saving them thousands of dollars, tens of thousands. So this this is just so let me get this straight then. You and your you and your innate brilliance of thinking outside of the box, which is why I like you. You're like, we got to figure out another way. And then you reached out to your people that you know, and you figured out how to get your hands on a list of... Now, let me ask you... This list that you have... Continuing list. It's, Continuing it's list. A, it's, a, it's, it's an, an ongoing... Updated list. list that comes in. Let me know immediately when an FHA guy so comes these, or doesn't go Are these, are these go properties oneself. for sale or are they Correct. just... Okay, so they're... They're properties that are for sale that have an assumable loan. Yeah? Correct. So, correct. So the, the, the thing is that we were able to identify data that all properties, I have two different data, data of information of all homes that have FHA VA loans, and I have data of just listings that are on the market active today that have assumable loans. What's the difference? Can you assume an FHA? Like, what's the, what difference? Okay. Differenti right. the, are FHA loans assumable? So, uh, so right now, all government-backed loans, such as FHA, Federal Housing Association, or we call it First Home Buyers, First Time Home Buyer Program, but it's FHA, it's a Federal Housing Association, Government back, 100% government back program, just like VA loans are. So those are the bread and butter. Those are the ones that you could definitely assume. Now, FHA, you know, as long as you qualify for an FHA loan, then you can take over that FHA loan. With VA, VA is a little different. If the VA seller is no longer going to be buying another property, as a VA, then he can sign off on that VA and pass that assumable loan to a non-VA buyer. As long as it's the second time around, you don't have to be VA to assume already a VA loan because it's already been finished. Mm. Uh, it's already been the loan's already or uh, it's already in the queue. It's already done. So, but the, the 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 pros and cons on the VA side is that. If there is a VA loan assumable, the question that we're going to ask the seller is, are you going to be buying another property with a VA loan? And if they are, then that VA loan will now work for the buyer unless the buyer is also a veteran. And if that's the case, then the veteran can give their assumable, their, their, VA, their VA access to that seller, and then the seller can transfer the assumable loan to the new VA buyer. That will be the only way on the VA side. Otherwise, 90% of the assumable loans today are FHA anyways. So, so anyone can assume them. Now, if the borrower, now there's a key to it. If the borrower is making millions and millions of dollars a year, they may not qualify for an FHA loan because their income is too high. Okay, so then you said that there's two lists. There's an FHA VA list, and then there's an assumable loan list. So let's say no, they're both. They're all going to be assumable. I'm sorry for interrupting you. They're both going to be assumable. The thing is that with the data that we have, is like there's going to be properties that are not listed on the market. That's one data, and the other data is the list of properties that are, that um that that are listed on the on the market and have assumable loans. And then the other data is properties that are not listed on the market that have assumability loans. Okay, so, so there's uh, there, there's a couple questions here. Yeah. You see, in, in, in Miami, I, I as an agent, I've always had difficulty with FHA and VA loans because the properties and the income like don't meet the requirements. They're over, right? Like the properties are over 500,000. Um, and, and I don't even know the current like requirements for FHA because I don't deal with it because our properties are usually more expensive than what the requirements are. So yeah. I don't know that the FHA and the VA list is really going to like how that's going to work out. But however, uh, wait, I know you get excited. Let me finish. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you could have, let's say you bought a house a year ago 
or let's say you bought it in 2020, right? And you spent a million dollars on it in Pinecrest, which is, I have a scenario like that, okay? And it didn't qualify for FHA. You went conventional, you put 20% down or you put 15% down, let's say, or you put whatever the fuck you put down. Um, But that that could fall into your assumable loan list, correct? Because I think that that list is really where. But this, let me tell you something. This list and these assumable loans is probably not going to be meant for somebody who's looking to purchase two, three million dollar home. This list and FHA and VA, we know that these are for medium to low class or just medium families in general that are just purchasing uh, homes in between, you know, three to seven hundred thousand to eight hundred thousand dollars. There are no single family homes that are three hundred. I'm just giving an example. Not not single families. It could be villas. It could be townhouses. It could be an approved building with condos in it um, mm-hmm. that are assumable. So it's not going to be for the multimillionaire that's looking to purchase a five million dollar house. No, no, I get it. it. I, I understand right. completely. But I'm just, yeah. I guess, what and and we'll have to kind of play it out and look at the list because what's going to happen is people are going to hear this and they're going to call me or they're going to call you, right? They're going to say, Hey, I'm looking for a single family home in, um, in Coral Gables. Do you have any assumable homes? Now a single family home in Coral Gables. I mean, that's a, that's a nice neighborhood or even South Miami. I'm not even Coral Gables, South Miami. But a decent single, a two, three, a two bedroom, three bath, I mean, a three bedroom, two bath house with like a, on a, you know, 7,000 square foot lot in South Miami, it's going to be, I get it. no, 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 it's not going to be 3 million, just entry level, normal house is going to be, you know, a million, 1.1, 1.2. So where it may not fall into, it may not be in every it's county, three, it's not going to be in the most expensive counties. Uh, I mean, most expensive location It's going to be in the medium class locations, such as let's okay. say Miami Gardens, just Miami like Lakes, Miami Lakes, just Miami like Lakes. Doral, Hialeah, El Portal, uh, obviously Miami, Miami in general. You know, mm-hmm. just so it's anywhere um, that you know that that we see the data showing a lot of FHA uh, deals that have been done in those locations. So we all know we know that there's certain locations that. Uh, they they only it's, it's mostly cash, and so we obviously we don't focus on those locations. We only focus on the locations that are um, that are FHA driven. So Could we get this list. Let's say you and I we get this list, and they're just they're just assumable loans, right? In Miami, and the houses aren't for sale, but they're assumable loans, right? So you get that list. And then we could send a letter to those people and see if they want to sell, right? Uh, because they might think, oh, I can't sell because, you know, but you never know. Maybe they can sell and offer the buyer an assumable loan. And then Or we'll I can just give you, you know, or we can go over a list that has active listings on the MLS that are assumable loans. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there's definitely many ways do to both. do it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as all our listeners are listening today, you know, if they want to take advantage of an assumable loan, they want to take advantage of reducing their payments by thousands to thousand dollars a month, saving themselves tens of thousands of interest. And not to mention that also you don't have to qualify as a conventional or, or, or VA uh, FHA loan at an eight or nine percent. You would qualify yeah. based on the assumability loan at two or three percent. So that also gives you uh, less risk on, on getting approved. Uh, for this loan. And the good news is that the servicers that service these FHA loans, it typically takes about, you know, 30 to 45 days to close, just like a regular FHA loan. So, uh, so yeah. And again, they also have to qualify like they were purchasing this property as an FHA loan. So right. you can't have a terrible credit, terrible income, terrible everything, and then think that you're going to assume a property. It's not going to happen. And so how, how can a seller find out if they're, let's say you're a seller and well, you're, you know, a homeowner and you're thinking about selling and you hear this podcast and you're like, Oh snap, maybe I can, you know, maybe I can sell my house. Like how can a seller find out if their mortgage is the good news to have them call us directly and I can do all the work and find out if the seller, if that one seller knows Mm -hmm. that he has an FHA loan, then most likely we'll be able to help them 
on the mm -hmm. seller side, not to mention because they have that seller assumable loan, the amazing part about a seller is that there's no appraisal. So if the seller is selling for whatever number they want, then that's that's the benefit to the seller because we might be able to get them. Well, I mean, we might be able to get them what they're asking for. But isn't there an appraisal for the second mortgage? The appraisal for the second mortgage is for the difference of 80%, up to 80%. Remember, the buyer's putting the additional 20%. Okay? So it's irrelevant. All oh, the so, if the, so if, if, for example, let's go back to our $800,000 house, and the second loan is only for 300000 then it only has to appraise for 301000 but it's already... Oh, right, correct. <laughs> so there's a lot of benefits to the whole thing. So sellers, you know, you want to sell your home and you want to save a bunch of money and you want to sell it quickly and for the most amount, call Jonah, I mean, call Johan and myself and we'll be able to not, to not not just help you, but be able to get the most that we can for your property. And then the how does side. it help? How does it help on the seller side? Tell me, let's well, I mean, the seller we, side would be the say they're listing it for eight hundred thousand. You know, mm -hmm. and if we are assuming it at five, getting a second mortgage for the difference, and they have to put twenty percent, then we're probably going to give him the eight hundred thousand that he wants, because also the credibility, the value is that they're able to assume more than half or half of that loan at two or three percent, which is absolutely unbelievable. Not to mention again the interest rate you're saving for all the years that the seller's been paying. Uh, you know, closing costs. You're not going to pay as much closing costs as a regular. So if you add all that together, you're looking at tens of thousands, even over a hundred thousand dollars of savings. So yes. Yeah. So the if the, if would the, be seller, on the seller, the seller would be <laughs> that they get the most that they possibly can for their home because they have the value by having that assumable loan that can be assumed to a new buyer. And the especially, buyer will be happy yeah. to pay top dollar for that home. Because especially if the seller owes a lot on the, on the mortgage, like the oh, more yeah. that the seller owes, the better for the buyer because the you can finance that at, at the lower. This is brilliant. brilliant. And not to mention the seller gets to sell for the most amount for their home. So we'll make sure that we'll be able to uh, say, Hey, once we put that property on the market and we put it out there that there's an assumable loan, I will, or you will educate the new buyer. Okay. And tell them the value. And once you bring value, they don't care about the price anymore. They care about what's going to be saving for the future. Not to mention yeah. what they're saving right now. You know? I mean, listen, so at the end of the day, you, you know, we do a market analysis and, and, you know, we'll, we'll sell it for fair course. market value for the, for again, the most no. part. But at the end of the day, you're not going to be like, you know, fiddling over five or $10,000 at the, if you can assume their mortgage at 3% or 9%. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, oh, and if they've already paid most of the interest, I mean, this Absolutely. is, oh my yeah. God, this is so exciting. Um, yeah. And not, and not just that, but now on the buyer side, you know, uh, anybody saying, Chris, I want to buy a property that's assumable. Well, the good news is we get it for you. We'll be able to identify it. And we'll be yeah. we'll be having your best interest in mind as as our rep, as us representing you on the buyer side to help you find the best deal possible and help you get you the best deal possible on the financing side to save you not just in the home, but also in the financing. So that's that's where the value that comes that we bring into the table for all my Miami clients. Oh my God, I love Everybody it. Everybody that's love listening it. to us today. Not just Miami, but we also have Broward County, Palm Beach mm -hmm. County, and the entire nation. Uh, mm -hmm. so, it's so, so we'll be able to have access to all that. I'm building a new app called House Sense that's going to be able to be very interactive for all borrowers and also all agents. And that's mm -hmm. coming up right now. Me, you know, having us do a interview with Market Watch recently, um, we've seen that now about seven million people have seen my 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 uh, my interview, and they and they are very ecstatic about what's going to happen. And the good news is that day when they saw that, uh, I got a call from Fox Business, and we did another interview with them just three days ago. So you will see a lot about assumable loans very soon. And we're going to be the ones going to be helping uh, people that really need it. Okay, know? I love it. Well, listen, I think that we've given people just enough information to make their head spin. And listen, it's a lot. It's a lot of information that we've given them. And um, 
But the gist of it is, is that this is a very viable solution. Not many agents are talking about this or know about this. So I would say it definitely is something that will allow you and I to bring value to our sphere of influence. Um, So thank you so much. And if you're listening and you're interested in, uh, you know, trying to go down this rabbit hole with us and have us help you find a a property. Yeah. (laughs) Help us help, help you find a a property with an assumable mortgage. Um, Get in touch. I mean, I'm, uh, all my contact information is below. Chris, I'll make sure that your contact information is there as well. And, um, you know, if just reach out to us and let's have and a let's conversation. Rock and roll. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to, mm-hmm. for my listeners, I, I work with people that I know. I, I know it sounds funny, but like, if I don't know you, I'm going to want to jump on a call with you, a Zoom call, or I'm going to want to meet you in person. And I say that because I don't know about you, Chris, but do you get people like texting you all the time? Like, hey, Chris, do you do you still sell houses in Delray? And then they're like, you're like, yeah, how can I help you go? Oh, um, you know, I would like to buy a million dollar house in Delray, but they'll never get on the phone with you and they'll never like want to meet with you in person. They want to do everything by text. Have you gotten those messages? All day. I get them all the time. daily. I get them daily. And I'm like, I'm not going to. It's all, you know, I don't know what they are. I don't I know what the scam from... is. I don't what know the scam, scam is, is. They're going to ask you to go to WhatsApp to speak with them. And that's right? what it is. It's the marketing. That's what WhatsApp does. WhatsApp hires people to call randoms, to get them to go through, uh, uh, to go to the WhatsApp app and have that WhatsApp app used. And I noticed that, that literally WhatsApp has calling center of just random people, just calling people saying, Hey, how are you? Um, would you like to talk? Send me, you know, uh, uh, just go through WhatsApp and talk. It's just all marketing, uh, you know, a lot of scams out there. So yeah. And then yeah. next thing you know, mm-hmm. they're going to want to send me a link that they want me to click on, which I'm not going to click on. And, you know, just, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. If you so. can't meet me on Zoom or at my office, I'm not going to work with you. And what I know for sure is that if you're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars, you're going to want to talk to the person that you're, you know, interviewing. I mean, hell, I have a renter. I have these renters from New York and they're renting, you know, just a, you know, two bedroom apartment in Coconut Grove. And they want to get on the Zoom with me on a Saturday morning and talk about it for an hour. So people who are serious will want to meet with you in person or on Zoom. Otherwise, absolutely. Uh, So I can find out their true objection, find out exactly what they're looking for and then attack it and trying to get to the finish line. And save them again, tens of yeah. thousands of dollars. Yeah. Today. So this is this is amazing. I'm so glad that we had this conversation. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna close out the podcast now. So uh listeners, you can find Buying Miami um anywhere you look for podcasts. So we're on Spotify, Amazon, uh Apple Music, we're on YouTube. So look for us. Uh you can find me on my website, buyingmiami.net. And um, Christopher, thank you so much. I'll make sure that You're your welcome. contact information is in the description below. And um, we're going to continue this conversation. So with that, I'm going to see you guys next time. And we are out. All right, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.